In this video, I'm gonna show you how to put together this beautiful photo gallery. Perhaps you're working on a project that has a lot of images and you're looking for a unique way to share those precious moments. So we're gonna harness the power of After Effects and create this scene from scratch. Hey, what's going on internet? Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. Hope you're doing excellent today. Please be sure to drop a like on this video as it truly helps out our channel. And if you're ready to create this awesome photo gallery, let's jump in and let's get started. As always, you can download our project files for free if you wish to use this as a template or just to follow along. So we have a 1920 by 1080 composition that we'll be working with. However, the very first thing we need to do is create a custom composition size for our photos. So what we'll do is come here, create a new comp, and you can set the width and height to any resolution that you want. So I'm gonna do a 700 by 1100, and this will create a vertical focus composition. So then I can come here, bring in a photo, for example, and that's cool. So now the next thing I wanna do is create the white frame to go around the actual photo. So what I'll do is come here to the top and I'll grab the rectangle tool, make sure we turn off fill, click okay, and make sure stroke is turned on and click okay. I'll use a stroke width of 90, and all I'm gonna do is draw out a rectangle, you know, kind of like this. And then I'll come here to my line tab and just make sure that this is centered. From here, we'll open up our shape layer, go to add and add a round corners property. We'll open this up and we can increase the radius. And you see this will round out the interior of the white border, which looks nice. Okay, so then we'll go back to our main you know, blank composition, which is 1920 by 1080. And I'll bring in the composition from our project panel that we just created into our main comp. And here it is. So for our first photo ready to go, all we need to do is duplicate it, create some variations, uh, and ultimately create depth. So I have this background photo here, which is just this wood. I'm gonna go ahead and bring this into my composition underneath everything. I'll go ahead and scale it down. And then make sure you toggle switch the modes until you see the 3D layer icon and make both these layers 3D. All right, so what we want to do is create depth and variations. So we'll grab our photo here and we'll have PR keyboard for position. And to create depth, all you need to do is just the Z position value. And this will later give us a 3D camera movement that looks really nice. So we'll grab our photo and we'll adjust the Z position to be around say negative 500 to negative 600. Uh, and then you're welcome to hit S right keyboard for scale and just scale this down. Now it doesn't look like we did anything, but if you hold on to a little bit later in this video, it's gonna make perfect sense of why we're doing a Z depth positioning. So now we can add in additional photos and it's very easy to duplicate this process. So what we'll do is we'll take our photo composition, go to edit, duplicate. You'll have PNG keyboard for position and we can move this somewhere else in our project. We can adjust the X and Y values. Now the one thing that's very important that we do is we adjust the Z position value and we bring it closer to our current camera, which I'll set this to negative 1100, uh, and this will help us create depth. And when we're happy with this position, we can duplicate our photo again, adjust the X and Y position to go somewhere else in our composition, and then slightly adjust the Z position so we can just offset the depth by a little bit and continue to duplicate until you have all the photo frames that you wish to have. So I have up to five copies of the same photo in here. You're welcome to pause the video, copy my position settings if you wish to do that, but really it doesn't matter just as long as you variate the Z position uh, as you scatter your images around, you're gonna look great. Another thing that we can do here is slightly, you know, offset the Z rotation by hitting R on our keyboard and just slightly setting this to maybe negative 15 degrees on one of the photos, selecting another photo and maybe setting it to, you know, a positive slight rotation like this. And, you know, that'll help add some variation uh, to your work. Another thing I want to do before we start swapping into our new photos is creating even further depth by using a drop shadow effect. So what we can do is say grab one of the photo frames here, go to effect perspective uh, and add a drop shadow. I'll set the opacity to 100%. We can set the distance to 20 and I'll set the softness to 250. And then depending on what photo I'm using, so it's this bottom left photo, I'll change the direction to arc towards or angle towards the middle photo. Then I will go to edit, duplicate for the drop shadow effects. We'll create a duplicate. And then I'll set the softness up to 500. Then I'll select both of our drop shadow effects, copy it, go to the next photo frame, and then paste those drop shadows in there. And then I can change the direction to angle towards the center photo. And I'll repeat this process for every photo and changing the angle to be towards the center. So even though it may seem like we have a lot more work to do, we're actually very close to being done. So how can we bring in some new photos here? So what we can do is go to our project panel, find that photo composition that we have here and duplicate it, you know, a few times. Okay, so we have a total of five photos in here and I have five photo compositions. And all I'm gonna do is select a photo composition and hold down Alt on my keyboard and click and drag this photo frame into here. And this will automatically replace that composition. And I'm gonna just quickly do this for all of them. 
So what this is gonna allow me to do is double click on the composition and bring in a new photo, scale it down, go back to our main composition, and that photo will be automatically updated. And then I can go through each of these and as you'll see, it'll be continued to update. And now I've swapped out all my photos and everything is completely unique. So it's a very fast process uh, to change out your photos and to have unique images. Before we move further into the video, we have a sponsor, and that's us. If you use After Effects or Premiere Pro, then be sure to check out our Motion Duck extension, which has over 20,000 editable templates for your projects. For example, you can browse, import, and edit templates all from the Motion Duck extension. So you'll be able to save hours of time on every project while producing high quality work. You can also download our free 100 template pack with the links in the description below. And if you purchase anything from our website, you will be supporting our channel, so thank you very much. All right, moving on to our last part of our tutorial, we just gotta set up the camera movement and then we'll add some creative effects to really make this stand out. So what we'll do is come here to layer new camera. Click OK. Let's open up camera one, go to camera options, and make sure depth of field is turned on. And we'll increase our focus distance until our central photo appears to be in focus. So I'll probably set this to 2000, and our central photo will be in focus. And then we'll come here to aperture, we'll set this up to say 125. And this will kind of blur things out around the edges. And then we'll come here to blur level, and we'll set this up to 400 ish percent. And this will blur out the rest of the photos because we created uh, that Z position depth in our work. And to make the blurriness higher quality, we'll change it from fast rectangle to uh, decagon. So you may need to roughly adjust your focus distance, your aperture and blur level to get those right settings. But ultimately this is happening because of that Z position depth that we created earlier in the video. All right, so when you're happy with your blur settings, let's go ahead and set up the camera movement. So we'll open up the transform tab here. We'll add a keyframe for point of interest, position, and Z rotation. Let's set our Z rotation to negative 10 degrees. Interest in the position keyframes. Let's move these forward to one second our timeline. And then we'll come here to the top. We'll grab the dolly towards cursor tool. And what we can do is click and zoom into our scene. And yes, After Effects will run pretty slow. That's why you didn't see that smooth adjustment. So you may need to lower your preview quality. But essentially when you're zoomed into your scene, you're gonna get something like this. So it's just gonna essentially zoom out and I'm showing a rendered preview here. But then we can move forward to say five seconds and we can just have a slight dolly out. So the camera will be dollying out of the scene. And then we can change our Z rotation to 10 degrees. So then we'll have like that nice camera rotation added to our scene. So here's what we have in a half quality preview of our camera movements looking good. What we can do is select our first set of keyframes here, hit F9 to make them easy ease, go to the graph editor, and you know you need to probably go to the speed graph, select your first handles here and drag these in. And this will create a you know a very nice flicker camera movement. So essentially, and quickly just give it like a quick snap camera movement, and I like that. Okay, so now let's go ahead and talk about how to add some quick camera shake to this so that we can add even more uh, camera movement to this. So what we'll do is come here to layer new null object and we'll essentially parent the camera to the null and we'll hit PR on keyboard for position, alt click the stopwatch and we'll type in wiggle, open parenthesis 0.5 comma 200. And this will give it that camera shake movement that you see in the preview here. And now the next thing I wanna talk about is taking this next level with some color correction uh, and also an overlay asset. So I like to come here to layer, new adjustment layer, and then go to effect, stylize, and grab CC vignettes. And we'll set the amount up to say maybe 185. And this really does a lot to the composition. I really like it. And then we'll go ahead and create another adjustment layer. And we'll go to effect, noise and grain. We'll add some noise to this. Set it to maybe 6%, uncheck use color noise. And this will make your scene a little bit more gritty, vintage, and I guess more authentic. And then go to effect, color correction, curves, and we can kind of tie in all the color correction of the photos together. So we'll click say to the red channel. And ultimately there's no wrong answer we can do here, but I'll go ahead and just bring up, I'll add a point and bring this up. Go to the green channel. Maybe I'll bring this down by a little bit. Go to the blue channel and I'll bring this down as well. By bringing the red channel up and the green and blue channels down, this will give it more of an orange sort of look. So it's really up to you what type of look you want it to have. You can make it look more blue, more cold, whatever you want. Uh, just go ahead and mess around the curves effect so you can tie all the photos together. And the last thing I like to do is add a light leak to our composition, which is from our cinematic light leaks pack. But you can just download the project file for free and you can get the one that we're using in this video. So I have it right here. I'll bring it on top of my composition and I'll toggle switch to modes until we see the blend mode, set it to screen. I'll set the opacity down to maybe like 25 to 50% somewhere in that range. And by using a light leak, it helps add atmosphere to your scene and really giving it more 
character and authentic design uh, overall to your scene. If you end up creating any projects from this tutorial, please be sure to tag us and share your work on Instagram at sunduckfilm. We love seeing your work. And if you're new to our channel, please be sure to hit that subscribe button as we post multiple tutorials every single week on After Effects and always be creating.